Today is day two of the Kent teacher's strike. And you heard yesterday somebody call into my show claiming that the strike was not illegal because the teachers had not yet signed a contract. In fact, I've had a lot of people who have tried to make that argument with me. And, uh, you know, everything I've heard suggests that that argument is absolute nonsense. But I wanted to find out from somebody who would know. So let me welcome to the show the Attorney General for the great state of Washington, Rob McKenna. Mr. McKenna, thanks for your time this afternoon. Absolutely. Okay, I've been talking with a lot of my listeners about these school strikes, and I know that your office uh, issued a statement about the legality of school teacher strikes. So let's start with that. Are these strikes legal? No, they're not. No judge that has looked at the question, and there have been dozens that have looked, uh, has concluded that the strikes are legal. Uh, there have been no appellate level decisions on that question because every time a judge issues an injunction stopping a strike, uh, the union goes back to work and it's not tested. But uh, we think that uh, it's a pretty clear matter. Okay, and uh, I, I had some Kent teachers contact me, and the Kent Education Association, the WEA, they're feeding them this information that as long as you don't have a contract, and, and that's what this is all about, we don't have a contract in place, as long as there's no contract, there's nothing uh, that, that's binding you to, to go back to school, the, and that it is not an illegal strike. Not no, true? That- that's, that's not true, at least as far as the courts are concerned. Uh, that argument has been tried before. It's been rejected by trial courts. So I think they're, they're whistling past the graveyard, legally speaking. I, you know, the, the, the thing is that the school district, the, the board of trustees for the school district, has to go to court to seek an injunction. But what typically happens is they continue negotiating and try to get uh, the strike resolved. We went through this with my kids last fall where the Bellevue schools went on strike yeah, that's right. went on strike and we were out nine days and ultimately it was resolved and uh it's it's unfortunate it's really tough on families uh obviously working families in particular uh, it's really hard for for people who have to scramble to make arrangements for daycare and uh you know and that's it's not that we're not all sympathetic to the concerns about class sizes that are too large and whatnot we we certainly are but there are, there are lots of public employees who aren't allowed to strike. You know, for example, law enforcement officers and, and firefighters. And it doesn't mean they're disadvantaged when it comes to negotiating their contracts. They, they, they are able to negotiate very good contracts. But they stay on the job even if the contract expires and, and work out a new contract. Okay, so even if the strike is illegal, then the question becomes, so what if it's illegal? What's the penalty if they, if they violate that, uh, that clause? There's no, there's no penalty if, if they uh, are ordered back to work and they go back to work. In other words, if the school district decides after some time passes to go to court and seek an injunction and the, and the teachers obey the injunction, that, there's no problem. If they disobey the injunction, then they open up uh, the union in particular to all kinds of contempt of court sanctions. So this is one of the reasons why in those cases where the school district has gone to court, the uh, the teachers in the, the union have agreed to abide by the injunction. Okay, and also parents could could seek an injunction as well. I mean, it's not just the district that could do that, right? It that isn't as clear, uh, but uh, you know, you, they certainly could argue they have standing to go to court because their interests are being harmed. Uh, but typically it's the school district trustees who decide to bring the action. Why not? And, and I've had a lot of parents ask me this. Why not the attorney general ordering them to go back to work or seeking the injunction to force them back to work? The principal reason is that these folks are not state employees. They're employees of the school districts, which are separate governments from the state. So we don't have any any uh, direct authority to go in and enforce. We would if perhaps if the contracts were state contracts, not school district contracts. Now, there is, a, there is a, a line of thinking that says that if they were on strike for such a long time that they would not be able to make up the days and would not be able to complete a 180-day school year, then we might have a, a, you know, a colorable argument to go in and say, look, on behalf of the state, we, you know, we seek the injunction, but we don't really have, short of that extreme circumstance, we don't really have any basis in state law to try to enforce against a group of local employees. Okay, and I guess I'm asking you this not as much as attorney general, but as, as a, a legal mind who has also been through this as a parent. Right. What's the practical reason 
to, of of not forcing the teachers back to work? Is there any argument of just letting these things play out because we have them every single school year? The school district trustees typically are concerned with two things. Number one, they they don't want to make it more difficult to resolve the strike. They worry about engendering bitterness if they're for, if they force the teachers back. Uh, and and uh, you know, number two, I think sometimes they worry about uh, blowback from the broader community if if they're in a community where the teachers are enjoying a lot of a lot of support. But bottom line is, uh, they generally try to work out the disagreement short of going to court because they're worried about poisoning the long-term relationship with the teachers. Now, the question you might want to ask is if you could reach a, a superintendent or a school trustee who has brought the brought a lawsuit such as in Marysville a few years ago, did you find that happen? Did you find that the lawsuit actually poisoned the well uh, and mm-hmm. ask them if that really happened or not? But that's the, that's the theoretical concern that they have, and, and that's why the Bellevue trustees did not go to court, and, and they resolved it after missing nine school days. Okay, and last question in uh, 30 seconds or less in your answer. The strikes are clearly illegal. There is no legal remedy. Should the legislature establish legal remedies, or is what you just told me about them not being state employees, does that prohibit the legislature from doing so? There is a legal remedy. The district can go to court, seek an injunction. That's been done. They can do so as soon as they want to. There's no penalty for the strike, uh, as you know, for having been out on strike without support of law. They could, the legislature could consider such a measure, or they could consider providing the state with enforcement authority, uh, but so far haven't, they haven't cho- chosen to do so. Attorney General Rob McKenna, I always appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dory. All right, so there you have it, straight from the AG. This teacher's strike is illegal.